this car, it's in an interesting stage because the uh, fixture, the entire fixture is in it. You can see how elaborate the fixture is and how many touch points and yeah. places it keys into the body to make certain that everything goes together the same way every time. It almost seems like your fixtures take as much time to put together as, as the body, right? They're pretty elaborate. We 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 built we built all of our own fixtures. This is actually the first Camaro fixture we built. And we build them inside of original cars. Oh. So we, we have an original car that we'll build the fixture inside of, and then we'll test fit it in another original car. And there's always differences. And then we figure out what's right, what's wrong, what's average. And then we always, we're always fine-tuning the fixture from there. Jonathan is putting the uh, roof cross braces in the car, okay. which the roof cross braces go in before the roof can and the forward bulkhead. And that's forward, these pieces here. That's just the forward bulkhead and the rear okay. bulkhead. Okay. Yeah. It's like going back in time watching these old car yeah, bodies being built. Incredible. Everything is welded together with, uh, over there you can see the uh, 220 volt single page uh, water cooled spot welders that we use. And it's those spot welders. Oh, that's the one hanging here from Yeah, those two things. It, it pulls the panel together and you trigger it, it actually draws together and squeezes the panel together tight. And then it sends the electrical current through it to weld it together. Would this have been something similar to what was used back when these cars were being made? Very similar. It's always <laughs> cool to see the welders in action. Yeah. So it's got an air trigger that opens the jaws, you can see. And then that that is so you can get around your part. Okay. And usually you gotta spin it or flip it to get in. you do more spot wells than the factory did on your cars to, for rigidity? 25% more uh, spot wells than the factory did. A good example of that would be on the rockers. Oh, the rockers, yeah. They, they, okay. they, they spot weld the heck out of the rockers. Yeah. Okay. That adds strength to the finished product, it does. right? It does. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, there's so many people putting higher horsepower engines in these cars. They, they, they drive them more aggressively than maybe car yeah that uh, we try and add add strength wherever we can and since the spot welding is a very fast process it's not that much more difficult for us to add additional spot welds in or out of rocker box on the Camaro if you look at an original one you probably see a spot weld every six eight inches right, right. and here we've got a spot weld probably every inch and a half or so wow. and it really doesn't take any more time to do that than it does to do a spot weld like GM did. Right, so we, right. add, we add more spot welds where we can. This is a brand new 6070 convertible going together. Pretty, pretty neat that you guys came here because the entire fixture is still in the body, so it shows you how we position all the panels to get the bodies to fit properly. This is the, uh, the steel fixture with a straight line clamp that fits in the factory tooling holes and factory uh, edges to make sure that the cars go together the same way every time and that everything is square and lines up. And you can see the elaborate picture for the windshield opening to make sure that the windshield opening is proper. Make sure the A pillars are in the right place. Uh, this this uh, straight line clamp actually fits into the uh, dome light hole oh, in the cow. Wow. That, that, that helps with the alignment as well. Make sure it's in the right place. So this car is mini tub. It has the wider wheel tub extensions in it. You can see the back seat structure has been cut down. Oh. And that's what Jordan is uh, working on now. Is he's working on uh, changing this piece so that it reattaches to the wheel tub like a stock one, except it's narrowed because the uh, this has moved in two and seven eighths inches, which allows the customer to put a like an 11 and a half inch, 12 inch wheel and a 13 inch wide or a 335 millimeter tire on the back. This car is also going to get our smoothly recessed firewall because he's putting an LS engine in it. 
Huh? And it's going to get the enlarged transmission tunnel for the later model transmission. So once the car is built and George takes the picture out, that's the last thing he does. Is he takes it just like you were doing it to an original car. The cars are born as mini tub, but when we put the smoothie firewall, recess firewall, and the transmission tunnel in, he does that last. He just cuts into the car, puts those pieces in, which allows you to put all the late model running gear in it. And that's done for consistency for the fit. You build it the original way with the jig and everything exactly. else, and then modify it. He does everything with the fixture installed to a point, and then to make sure everything fits and lines up. When he hangs doors, of course, he'll take the fixture out. And hang, hanging the skins, final fitting of the skins, is really more of an art than it is technical. This part is very technical and exacting. When it comes time to hanging the skins, every car is a little different. You okay. move things around and make things fit. It's, it's kind of a, an art adjusting all that stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. How many bodies do you? Of uh, Tri Five cars that we built, right out of just over a thousand cars, car bodies. Okay. They shipped all over the world. Wow. Camaros were probably up to somewhere around 400, 450 wow. uh, of okay. the first generation Camaro and Firebird, okay. 67, 8, 9. Uh, the Chevy Twos, uh, we built, I think, 11 or 12 of those. And the second generation Camaro, we're on number four. Wow, and you've been in business for how long doing this? Uh, we started in 2011. Wow, that's, that's quite an accomplishment to yep. do that many yep. in that short of a time period. That's a, yep. very impressive. Yep. And it all this is a 70 to 73 Camaro, oh. number four. This, okay. is, this is car number four. The second generation Camaro. Okay. GM just licensed us for that late last year, and we began production uh, middle of last year. And these are the cars that are up and coming and becoming popular. Okay. Now, see, so you got cars up on the. Uh, yeah, that's my business here. partner's uh, Rat Rod. He bought that car uh, right after Hurricane Katrina in out of New Orleans. Here, you see a '66, '67 Chevy Two body. That's one of our fixture bodies that we use to build the Chevy Two fixture. Then uh, two cars uh, past that. There's uh, another body that we used as a. Camaro fixture car, and then uh, this car here is uh, outbound, and then this is uh, my car. I'm doing a 57 Chevy Gasser for myself, and this is not a real deal steel body. This is an original car, oh, which wow. I should have used a real deal body because it has been, uh, I've, I've put a lot of pieces in that car to get it to where it is, so I really would have been better off by yeah, a real deal body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, but if, if, I was a, if I was a customer at home in my garage, I would have bought a real deal steel body instead of building that car, and I'd have been money ahead. But you said you were going for punishment. I am. <laughs> I like getting hit on the head. As we all do sometimes. Yeah. So, very cool. Right? You're welcome, and uh, good luck, and uh, all right. let us know how your project yeah. goes. Yeah, going to stay yeah, here. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. You guys time. have a safe trip home. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like this video. And special thanks to Joe for your time and hospitality. We really did appreciate it.